370 years ago, Mary, Queen of Scots, came to Edinburgh. That far-off day was the last time that Scotland's capital saw a Queen of Scottish blood. But today a king comes in state, and with him a Queen of the House of Strathmore, one of the great families of Highland history, and all Scotland waits for them. At Prince's Street Station, the Lord Provost presents the keys of the city, and the king hands them back, saying, I am perfectly convinced that they cannot be placed in better hands than in those of the Lord Provost and magistrates of my good city of Edinburgh. From the station, their majesties drive along a cheering Prince's Street with the guns booming a salute from the High Castle. First comes a troop of Scottish horse, then an escort of Royal Scots Greys, and the Landau with their majesties and the princesses, drawn by the Windsor Greys to the roar of Scottish hearts. And so on to the palace of Holyrood House, the ancient guardian of Scottish history. Here, since the time of James IV, Scotland's kings have held their court. Its towers and spires have seen gay triumph and grim tragedy. And now for seven days, Holyrood is to be the focus of Scotland's life and honor. His Majesty's first duty at the palace is to inspect the royal company of archers, which for centuries has been the king's bodyguard north of the border. They still carry bows and arrows, symbols of Scotland's mighted arms, and in their hats are waving eagle's feathers. And whenever the king meets his archers, ancient law says that they must present him with the redendo, three barbed arrows mounted in silver. <laughs> Meanwhile, a great crowd has been gathering on the slopes of Arthur's seat outside the palace grounds to watch the march past of the troops that lined the royal route earlier in the day. And again, Edinburgh shows the warmth of its welcome. And now Scotland's crack regiments are on parade, the Black Watch. The Gordon Highlanders. 